get ready to step into the brutal world of Mexico's deadliest drug war. Between 2006 and 2012, criminal organizations such as the Zetas, the Cartel del Golfo, and the Sinaloa Cartel battled each other to the death for control of different territories, including those stretching across the U.S. border. Cities like Ciudad Juarez, next door to El Paso, Texas, became hotbeds of madness and danger. These violent years saw more than 120,000 people fall victim to the streets. In the midst of this chaos, President Felipe Calderón declared a war against the drug cartels in December 2006. He appointed Gennaro Garcia Luna, a former top cop, as Mexico's Secretary of Public Security to lead the country's strategy against criminal organizations. But behind the scenes, Garcia Luna was making secret deals with the infamous Sinaloa cartel. He provided crucial government intelligence to Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, enabling him to protect his drug shipments and eliminate his adversaries, all while lining his pockets with millions of dollars in bribes. In this episode of Illicit Investigations, we take you on a thrilling journey into the rise and fall of Gennaro Garcia Luna, a former American ally in the war against drugs, who ultimately ended up in a U.S. federal prison for his involvement in drug trafficking. Brace yourselves for this story of corruption, betrayal, and the high price of power. The federal courthouse in Brooklyn, New York witnessed a parade of former high-ranking Sinaloa cartel members and corrupt Mexican officials during Gennaro Garcia Luna's trial in February 2023. The witnesses accused the 50-year-old former Secretary of Public Security of Mexico of leading a corruption ring that allowed hundreds of tons of cocaine into the U.S. One of them was Sergio Villarreal, also known as El Grande, for his Hulk size. A former Sinaloa cartel lieutenant, who testified that Garcia Luna was on the payroll of the cartel for eight years, receiving over $1 million a month in the early 2000s. Art Fontes is a former FBI agent who worked on the two sides of the border in those years. When you work with, uh, let's say, Gerardo Garcia, or you work with the Mexican Marines or the military, you try to find out what allegiance they have to which cartel. And then if you're working against the Sinaloa cartel, you're not going to go through Genaro. You're going to go through, um, let's say, the Mexican uh, Marines. In December 2019, Gennaro Garcia Luna was arrested in Dallas, Texas, and subsequently taken to New York, where he faced five charges, including engaging in a criminal enterprise and conspiring to distribute drugs. Despite the serious allegations, Garcia Luna declared his innocence. During the trial, Jesus Zambada Garcia, also known as El Rey or The King, a convicted drug lord and brother of Ismael El Mayo Zambada, the current leader of the Sinaloa cartel, testified that he personally packed two sports bags containing a total of $5 million in cash. These bags were then allegedly given to Garcia Luna in this French restaurant in Mexico City located near the U.S. Embassy. Another witness at the trial, Oscar Nava Valencia, also known as El Lobo or The Wolf, a former leader of the Millennio Cartel, claimed that he handed over $3 million in cash directly to Garcia Luna at a car wash in Guadalajara, Jalisco in 2008. Nava Valencia said he was acting under orders from Arturo Beltran Leva, a former co-leader of the Sinaloa cartel who allegedly wanted to secure the transportation of massive drug shipments and obtain intelligence about upcoming police raids. I'm not defending Gennaro Garcia Luna. However, what I saw in the trial in New York was very flimsy evidence, to say the least. The drug traffickers were all very eclectic. You know, they all said different things and there was no cooperation of their testimony in terms of video, audio, text messages, email messages, photographs, none of that. Garcia Luna holds the dubious distinction of being the highest ranking Mexican official ever tried in the U.S. Prior to his appointment as Secretary of National Security, he served as head of Mexico's Federal Investigation Agency, known as the AFI, equivalent to the FBI. 
He held this position from 2001 to 2005. El Rey Zambada claims that during that period, he oversaw the drug operations for the Sinaloa cartel at Mexico City's International Airport. He also alleges that he had several Mexican law enforcement agencies on his payroll, including the AFI, which was headed by Garcia Luna. Zambada described how jets from Venezuela and cargo planes from Colombia, packed with cocaine, landed in Mexico City's International Airport under Garcia Luna's watchful eye. He also claimed that sicarios or hitmen from the Sinaloa cartel sometimes used AFI uniforms to transport drug shipments across Mexico. El Rey Zambada, who was in supervised release since 2020, explained that the Sinaloa cartel could introduce up to 100 tons of cocaine per month into the U.S., with a value of up to $3 billion, and Garcia Luna played a key role in their success. Since El Chapo Guzman's trial in 2019, some witnesses have highlighted Garcia Luna's involvement in drug operations of the Sinaloa cartel. One example is the seizure of a 19.5-ton cocaine shipment by the U.S. Coast Guard in Panama in March 2007 on a vessel named El Gatun. According to federal investigations, Garcia Luna was going to profit from this shipment. Also, El Grande alleges that he gave Garcia Luna $14 million in cash in Chiapas, southern Mexico, from another drug deal of the Sinaloa cartel in the early 2000s. I was assigned to DEA headquarters in Washington, D.C. as the chief of international operations when Genaro Garcia Luna was the head of the federal investigative agency in Mexico under uh, Vicente Fox. And I would travel to Mexico City on several occasions and I would meet with Genaro Garcia Luna and as well as with DEA. And I personally never heard anything about Genaro Garcia Luna being corrupt or what have you. So Mexico is the land of conspiracies. And I personally don't go with rumors. I, I have to deal with evidence. I have to deal with facts. During the trial, FBI agent Jose Moreno testified that despite sharing intelligence about El Chapo Guzman's location with Mexican authorities, Garcia Luna's team always arrived too late to make an arrest. In February 2012, El Chapo narrowly escaped a raid on a mansion in Los Cabos a resort town in Mexico's Baja California Peninsula that former U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton had visited the day before. Reports suggest that it was Garcia Luna's men who tipped off El Chapo to avoid his detention. Garcia Luna was a key ally of the United States in the fight against drug trafficking. He participated in high-level meetings with top U.S. officials, including Hillary Clinton and President Barack Obama. As part of the Merida Initiative, a security cooperation agreement between the U.S., Mexico, and several Central American countries to combat international crime, Mexico received at least $1.6 billion between 2007 and 2010. Garcia Luna's office received a significant amount of this funding to purchase intelligence equipment, which sometimes ended up benefiting the Sinaloa cartel. Earl Anthony Wayne, the U.S. Ambassador to Mexico from 2011 to 2015, stated at the trial that Garcia Luna's federal police had a reputation for protecting El Chapo Guzman and the Beltran Leyva brothers. According to other testimonies, in 2008, Garcia Luna helped Arturo Beltran Leyva escape from a raid on a house in Acapulco. Harold Paveda was a Colombian drug trafficker known as El Conejo, or The Rabbit, because his cocaine kilos were marked with the Playboy logo. He was a major drug supplier to the Sinaloa cartel and testified that Arturo Beltran Leyva had once kidnapped Garcia Luna for suspected collaboration with his enemies. The Rabbit said he facilitated the smuggling of around 1,000 tons of cocaine into the U.S. and owned his own ranch in Mexico, reminiscent of Pablo Escobar's estate, complete with this zoo. Garcia Luna had a close working relationship with the DEA, FBI, and CIA, and frequently shared his enthusiasm for sports cars and Harley Davidsons with visiting U.S. agents at his mansion in Mexico City. I, I met him a couple of times. One, I went to his house, and one, it was just a meeting. 
Um, but just from talking to talking uh, briefly with him and, and people that know him very well, um, he was someone that was uh, egotistical, a narcissist. Uh, his hobbies, you know, he loved fast cars. He had all, he had a, uh, I'm not sure how many cars he had. I think he had 50 to 100 of those really expensive cars like Shelby's, Ford Shelby's, Mustangs. He had, um, you know, a lot of the old uh, classic vehicles that he collected. Gennaro Garcia Luna retired in 2012 and moved to Miami, where he opened GLAC Security Consulting a firm he used to obtain multi-million dollar contracts with the Mexican government. Mexico's Financial Intelligence Unit found contracts worth $634 million related to Garcia Luna's firm, which were used to acquire intelligence equipment. After several years in the U.S., Garcia Luna obtained a green card and, on his application for U.S. citizenship in 2018, claimed he had never committed a crime. But the question remains, where is the dirty money obtained by Garcia Luna from the Sinaloa cartel? Judge Brian Cogan did not allow federal prosecutors to show evidence of Garcia Luna's wealth in his trial. However, the Mexican government announced that they will try to recover $700 million from assets seized from Garcia Luna in the U.S. President Andres Manuel López Obrador, who used the trial as a political tool against the opposition party Garcia Luna served for over a decade, announced a list of 19 properties in South Florida owned by Garcia Luna's corruption ring through shell companies that are being recovered by the Mexican government, including this $4.4 million mansion in Sunny Isles, two condos in the luxury beachfront tower Jade Ocean in Sunny Isles, and three apartments in the lavish building Icon Brickle in the heart of Miami. The list also includes 42 vehicles, including two Lamborghinis, a Ferrari, a Bentley, and a Rolls Royce. Mexican financial authorities confirmed that assets in Mexico belonging to Garcia Luna for almost $2 million have already been frozen. Garcia Luna's trial lasted nearly a month, and the jurors found the testimonies credible enough to convict him unanimously on all five counts. Cesar de Castro, Garcia Luna's lead lawyer, was disappointed with the decision. He claimed his client was actually a major player in taking down cartels, and those who testified at his trial were out for revenge. True or not, the reality is that Gennaro Garcia Luna, who was once the biggest U.S. ally in the war against drugs in Mexico, will be locked up for the rest of his life for filling his pockets with drug money. His legacy will be one of corruption and deceit, a cautionary tale about the dangers of power and the importance of holding those in positions of authority accountable.